I'm back. Um, I believe I messed up my first video. I don't know where it went, so I had to find it a little bit later. But this one right here is starting from the beginning, but it's still the same. Um, the purpose of this video is a DIY, making my own cathedral wedding bell, and I want to drape the back. I already cut the round portion of my wedding bell. I'm going to link the two videos together. Um, and now I'm working on the top part. And what I'm doing is, I opened up my lace, and I gathered it here at the end. And all I did was, I centered my piece of lace, and I put the little pins in it so I know that was the center. And then I took the lace, and I gathered it here, like this. I'm going to measure it because I want it to be about the same width from the center. So, I have the first one that I've done at an 8 inches. So, the second one, I'll make sure I take it right about here. So when I gather it all together, I'm just folding. Together like that. And I have a straight pin with a white tip that I'm going to lock and secure it in place. This is what I have. Mind you, this is a DIY, so I'm just working this out. So this will be my shoulders. And what I'm looking for is a drape piece. Now my dilemma is what I'm going to do. Um, do I want to cut it straight down the back? Down the center? Or do I want to cut it in a round circle? Because if I'm thinking about cut it in a round circle, then it will give me that drop look that I'm looking for. But if I cut it straight down the middle, it might give me something else that I'm looking for. I did two prototypes on a piece of paper. One, I did with thinner shoulders and I did it round. And then when I open it, it gives me that look. And that's some that's what I'm looking for. That shape. This one, I cut it shorter, just a little short slit right here. And when I open it, it just give me like a V shape. And I'm mainly I like this right here. Um, this is what I, this is what I'm looking for. But what I'm worried about is my edges when they gather correctly. But I'm just like I said, this is my first DIY project, and I believe that it's gonna come out right. And if I mess up, I'll just go buy some more days. So, but I believe I'm gonna be okay. So I gathered it here in the middle. This way I can just make one cut, and I don't have to worry about trying to go straight around. Just laying it out. The two shoulders come together here. I'm going to pull it down. And I measure from my back down to where my point of my dress is. It's 13 inches. But where I measured it here, I put it at 18 because I want, I'm looking for that drop, that middle drop. So I'm thinking if I take about this mouth out around the circle, I, I think that will do it. Um, I think that will do it. So let me sketch it out with my little red box top because that works for me. Sorry, my back is in the way. I have a pencil. Number two. Um, no, I'm not using chalk because I can't see the little chalk. But if I see the little pencil, then when I cut, I cut above where I'm at. So, I wanted to come draped in a point. So I'm gonna bring my point here. I'm gonna start my point here. Come up, and I'm gonna swerve it in. Okay. 
because I want my back to be wide. So I'm coming in some more. And then I'm gonna start the curve. And I have a white table, so you see the pencil mark coming through the lace through the table. But that's fine. None but the soap and water won't get off. So here is my marking. And I'm looking at. Mark it. I don't know if you can see it. Um, let me see my little tusty pillow. Here's my little tusty pillow. So you can see the marking. Where I think you might be able to see it. I'm holding it up here. So when I open it, the, the bell. This is my shoulder blades where it's pinned at, and what I'm looking to cut out will be right around here. Coming up, and we're gonna come down, up, and around. And then I'm looking for all that to be open and draped. Um, that's the look that I got. So, let's get those tusty old test tube scissors and go in and take care of that part. And we'll pull it back like this. Pulls it back up so it's even. Even the open sides back out. Like that, around and a circle. Just put it at the top. Show a couple of the belts I have gathered. I like doing DIY markers too. Hashtag, I don't let me, I can't claim it, but I like doing DIY products. So, I'm going to cut down, and I think I'm going to cut upwards. It might be easier to take it up and around and go down and around. So, I'm going to start here at the corner, right here, because I want it to be straight. And then I'm going to go up. And I'm cutting in front of or behind, as you would say, my marking. So that that pencil lid won't be on my part of the tree. So I'm coming right on up. Let me grab my pillow. This is so you can see how much I cut off when it comes around. This is the part that I took out. It's like that. And this is how I envision it to drink. Perfect. And this will be the drape. Just look at the pillow as being my back. And this is what I'm looking to do. Where it will be here. Up here. It's going to be pinned to the top of my shoulders. I'm using all of my hands. And then I want it to come down. Like this. This is this is exactly what I had envisioned. 
just like that, and I wanted to come down. Yep. There it is. And what I'm going to do here is where I'm going to run my chains. So we get this back here like this. Close this back up. This is why. Looks like I like it. And this is what I'm going to do. This is where the needle and thread comes in. I'm using my half inch, so come this way. I'm just adjusting my strap part. Just a little bit. I give myself about an inch of space from the top. And the reason why you want to do that because you want to be able to fold the draping over. It's right here. Put that in there. Bam, like that. Now I could stitch it like this, but what I'm going to do is take my invisible thread, needle thread. Uh oh, I think I intertwined the thread together. Oh, nah, this is visible, so you really can't see it. You gotta make sure we keep those separated. But guess what? It is, you can't see it, but you see my hand coming down. And what I'm gonna do is just cut it off right here. So I'm not about even be playing with it. And make another little slit knot. Okay, I'm gonna make two. You see the light? You see it? It's right here. It's invisible. That's why they call it the invisible thread. Unless you look on it, you light, you really can't see it. There it is. I made two just in case I missed one. And I'm going to leave my little tail out. That's so that I can see it when I go double. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my needle and I'm going in and out. I'm gonna first start it, and I have the wrong needle. I have a hair needle. This is not a regular needle, but that's fine. It's gonna do the same outcome as well. See, as you see right there, I tightened it up. And I'm going to double and knot it again because of its being a visible thread. I like to make sure that it's secure. There you go. And my rabbit ears are right here. This is my rabbit ears. I put it up against the red so you see it. As you can see that. That's my rabbit ears right there. So I have them hanging out so I know where I'm going to cut it off at. So since I have that, I'm just going to go in and out. You don't have to be special. In, out, in, out. Exactly how I'm going to do it. Bam, in and out. And just keep it moving. See, it's going to gather itself. In and out. Mind you, I'm staying an inch from the top. In and out. In and out. 
Yeah. Because it's going to be long. So even if it looks like it's not level, it's going to be level when you put it all together. As long as you stay in from the top, you're going to be fine. Mind you, it's lace. I mean, it's netty. This is netty. Here you go. And watch how I pour it together. And just like that. Okay. Like that. Now the piece that I'm planning on adding to the top, which is my piece right here. I don't know if that light back there may be throwing you off. You see a little better? Maybe I could pull the curtain a little bit. Now, yeah, take away some of the bright light from outside so that you can see some of what I'm doing. Maybe if I pull up a little bit. I think. I'm trying to adjust. I don't want my husband to come out and knock my stuff down. Yes, I call him my husband. Yes, I do. If you own it, if you own it, you're claiming it. The Lord will grant you. Trust and believe in it. It's yours. He's mine. We get ready to do this. Um, he supports me in everything I do. And this is the uh, material that I'm going to use. The beaded applicant. And I plan on having it just like this. On top of the bed. So this is how I'm going to do that. So let me find my testy, testy thread. And let me secure that some more. Take it to about right there. And that's why I pulled that out because that's how I'm going to measure the width of how much tool netting that I want out. I think that is beautiful. Not that much. And that is going to be placed on my shoulder, like that, straight across the shoulder. So, again, because I messed with it, let me adjust it one more time. I don't want it. I could do it straight like this and coming down. But I don't want that. I like it. I like it coming across the shoulder. So I'm just gathering my netting right there. Just want to make sure that the netting is fully involved, engaged right here. So we want to do that when we look at this, the actual material is sitting on the netting and not on a piece of it. And what I'm going to do is take my straight pins, right where I want it to sit at, and I'm going to use my straight pins to come through the netting and through my little beaded jewel. I just stuck myself. Be mindful. I'm good. I don't want the blood to get on my netting. So I put it right there. Bam. Here it is. Okay. I'm double checking, make sure that I'm not. Yeah, I'm good. See me pulling this part right here. Double netting. So I'm gonna make sure that the net is at the tip. 
and where the little piece of jewelry is. slip knot, come down, put my finger on the tip of the knot where I want it to secure and stay. And I'm locking it in place. Now what I'm going to do, all these pins sticking out, be mindful, you got pins, I got pins sticking out everywhere, holding everything together. I'm a hand stitch. I'm a hand stitch the rest of this invisible thread right through the neck. So I'm coming. The neck piece, I want to make sure we understand. It's right there on the outside. You see, I'm going to see the thread. If I put up against something blue, but this is the thread. In my hand, bam, that's the thread. So I'm coming in through the thread on the tip of the beaded jewel. And I'm going to take it all the way through. And then I'm come take the needle back through. I'm, I'm securing it on there. In and out, in and out. Exactly what I'm doing. In and out. Now what I'm doing is I'm hand stitching the invisible, I'm hand stitching with the invisible thread. The pieces that I have are beaded applique. They have a little piece of white material underneath the applique, so I attached it with straight pins. Attached it with straight pins. You see it? And this is the front of the beaded applique, and this is how it's going to look with the lace and bezel. And it's going to sit on top of my shoulder. And it's going to drop down. So far, it's coming out cute. So I'm hand stitch. I'm hand stitching all the way over. I'm bending the netting down so that none is showing. I did the one side already. This is completely finished. You don't see the netting hanging up up here. It's going to lay flat like that. What I'm doing now is measuring my beads. I attach to my shoulders where I want it to look. I cut my bead. See how I want it to drape. Got another one here. Everything's going to reach up at the shoulder and come down. So, let me see. Take measure. Measure the shoulders. Shoulder to shoulder. I did measure 13 before. Oh. 
guess 13 and 16. Shoulder to shoulder. See, I'm trying to do it myself. It's about, about 15 and a half. So this is going to be, this is the width that I got. Shoulder to shoulder. This is the beaded. I got point to point. Where I want it to drop. Part of the beads too. I also got these from Joann's and Michael's had them. Um, they come in a little container. They were $250. They are metallic white pearls clusters 4.0 mm. And then I'm just I'm gonna drape all the beads starting at the top and I'm gonna bring them down. I want them to be like, let's see, that a little bit. Yeah. Cut it. So basically, I'm going to all keep me at the top right here like that. I'm going to do like three strands, maybe four. Coming like that. I want to go dainty. That's what I'm going for. Like all the dainty. I don't know if you can see that the way I'm dropping them. Cascade round. I think it's kind of cute. Alright, so I'll cut that a little bit. Bada boom, bada beep. I don't want nothing too far up here on my neck because I do have a, I'm wearing a necklace in the front because my front of my dress has a V shape. So this is like the back of my dress. And this is the back of the veil, basically, which will come across like this. I think that's kind of cute. Yeah, I think I should have string of four coming down. Make the four a little bit shorter. I make that about that. So that's how that's going to look right there. I have these pinned in at the top of my dress that I have on now with straight pins. So I wanted to see. I looked it. This is what I have so far. This is how I put the beaded applique on the veil. This is the string of pearls. Yes, it's a string. Put the neck in here. And this is how basically it will be underneath the dress. This is the veil. So it's going to be like this. With the beads hanging down the back. See my V point. Is here. I think I may fit another bead. Maybe not. Okay, it's here, it's here, it's here and there. Yeah, I think that's cute like that. This is what I'm going for. I'll take a picture with my phone. And I believe that's it. And I'm definitely going to have pictures. 
that you have pictures that I will put at the end of this video for the finishing touch. I don't believe I'm going to add anything else to it, but if I do, then I'll make a part three. This is part two, but I believe I like it just like this. Um, let me put the beads on and I'm going to see how that goes. And I can make okay. Now this is the look that I'm going for. I moved the video camera closer so you can see. I was going to try to use these, uh, they call quick links. This is what it looked like. It's actually jewelry that you take and make with a necklace. And I was looking at those because of the silver. I thought that would be cute. But I also thought about the pearl. So when I move this down, um, this is my phone ringing. I'm at the pause for a second. Now here it goes with the pearl detail. Now if I put the pearls there, well, you know, once I straighten them out, that's how it will look. But I'm thinking the silver links will look better because everything is trimmed in silver. I'm using the links because the link, one, is easier to put on, but for two, because of this being silver, and then I have the clear, um, like little rhinestones that's on the netting, and then I have the two, and I have the little designers up here. All the colors match. So doing the pearl may be taking me out of the sink color that I'm looking for. I'm hand stitching. I hand stitched everything. For one, that's just ridiculous. I hand stitched all this. I don't have no sewing machine. So it's like DIY. We all can sit down and hand stitch a little something. Put the needle in, make it tight, and you know, make it that secure. And the thread I'm using now is the metallic coat clear. This metallic coat is metallic. It's a coat metallic. So it looks like it's white, you can see a little bit, but it's not the invisible one. I notice about these metallic and clear threading that it pops easily compared to regular threading. Some double lighting. Some of the things. Because what happened was hand stitching, it jammed over here. So instead of just cutting it all the way off, the part that got stuck out, I double knotted, triple knotted, quadruple knotted all together so it can stay. And then I just keep on stitching instead of just breaking my knot off. And I'm looping my curved needle several times and I'm going through to secure it some more. Say again, it's snagged, but that's fine. I'm not going to cut it off. I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to cut the tip of my needle. I'm done with it. And I'm just taking all these little strings and I'm going to tie a knot to secure it. I had already hand stitched it about 30 times. So it's secure and it's in there. Now I'm just going to tie this knot. We are continuing to follow several other developing stories.
light is affecting. It started raining down here where I am. So, got a little dirt. Thunderstorm and lightning. This is the look. So, here's a picture of being on my shoulders. Like this. And a chain link. Hanging down like that. Um, let me get the dark pillow so you can see. Imagine this is my shoulders over here. This is here. And this is a little gray. And of course I'm tall. So it's going to drop down like this. And it's one chain. And then what I was going to, what I do is, because it comes all the way down, the split. I'm going to link it here. Pull it there. And then I'm going to link them right next to each other. Right about there. Let's see if I can hold straight pins to see. And put it in so you can roughly see how it's going to be. And just the split, I have it coming down just like this. And this is what the back of it would look like. Can you see that? Okay. This and what you see in the back here is that I made my own flowers for the church. So that's I have a lot of I have a lot of little DIY projects going on. So I made my own flower for the church. So yes, yeah, so this is what you see is how it would be. This one drop down and I have it on in here. And that would be the back. I may go out and buy another link. So it can drop right here. I need it right here. And this is how it's going to work. I think this is gorgeous. Yes, I'm going to go out and get another link. And put it like right around here. So it will be up just a little bit higher. And then, there you have it. My Cape Cod wedding veil. That I handmade myself. I will follow the pictures once I wear it. I'm going to drop a little pearl 
on the corner of this split right here so it can you be sure to stay down. So I'll drop a little pearl somewhere right there so it'll be sure to stay down. So and it, like I said, this is four yards long. So it's very long. I have it rolled up right now. You will see it. There it is. And I cut the bottom. My first video shows how I cut the bottom into a round circle. See it come around to a circle. So and then it will open up. And there it is. Cape Cod. Wait a Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And what I'm doing now is I'm taking a piece of Velcro, clear white Velcro. 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 Try to turn it upside down either way, but this way you can see it. Alright. And I'm cutting me off a little slit. Here you go. And I'm hand stitching it. Find the flexible light in the back. Hand stitching it right here at the corner. So I'm gonna hand stitch that little piece, and I'm gonna tack the other piece to my dress at the top of the shoulder blade. But I'm just gonna put a small tack in it so that at the reception I can take it off. Um, this way I can just take it off and I can wear it and put it wet. But this way you won't also see that my dress um, had a little tack in it. I had to get my dress for a second so that I can see exactly where so I'm going to take it right here or I can take it here. It look like it's a beaded design off the side of the dress. But I think coming across here like this. So I just put a little tack slit right there. So it's coming down and then it comes in. 